This video is going to cover restoration of bolts, fasteners, and nuts for a, a chassis restoration. And predominantly, the three major finishes onto hardware is a zinc plated finish, a gray phosphate finish, and a black phosphate finish. And all three of these are readily achievable in a home workshop using chemicals that you can buy at most local stores. Um, the first part of this video is going to cover zinc plating. And to zinc plate, what you need to have is a salt that will actually transfer the zinc from a zinc bar to the product that you're trying to plate. And um, you need some sort of electrolyte solution. So you use vinegar and then you want like a brightener solution. So you'll use like Carol syrup into the solution. So what we have here is a standard two gallon pail, which works pretty well from a size point of view to plate fasteners. Um, so first of all, what we'll do is we'll start setting up our electrolyte solution within this bucket. Uh, the first thing we're going to add is a thousand grams of Epsom salts and we'll put that into the bucket. Then we'll add 480 grams of Carol syrup and based on your your bucket size you can you can scale this up or scale it down if you want to plate larger fasteners or larger parts in like a five gallon bucket if you use the same ratios, um, it'll, it'll work fine. And so we'll put these into there and then we'll put in five quarts of vinegar. And then we'll put in 100 grams of zinc sulfate. And what this is, is this is basically powdered zinc. So what this does is this will just start getting the zinc in solution here. So it'll actually plate a lot quicker. Um, and we'll stir this up and then we'll just fill the remaining um, bucket with some distilled water. Uh, the reason why you want distilled water is... Um, regular tap water has minerals into it and it'll actually put white streaks into your, your plated component. And then what we'll do is we'll just mix this up until it's all dissolved and in solution. So this here is your electrolyte. Um, then what you're going to need to do is introduce some more zinc into this you're going to need to come up with some plates and what we use is these are in the boat industry these are they put in the bilge of a boat or whatever and it has a really nice hookup wire and what we'll do is we'll put this into the solution and the zinc will start to chunk off of here and actually go into the solution and we'll also put in um, some strips into the bucket as anodes and we're going to use um, zinc roof flashing. This is designed for the roofing industry that zinc um, helps um, stop the formation of um, moss on roofs. So the zinc basically will come out of this will go onto the roof and it acts as a barrier so moss will not grow onto a roof and what's nice about this is this this forms up really nice and what we'll do is we'll take some strips of this kind of put it into the bucket and we'll lay it in there and we'll cut these strips off as you can see, it's real easy to work with. 
and we'll just form these inside the bucket. Put it onto the sides. We'll do another one here. We'll lay those into the side, then we'll put this into the bottom of the bucket. And what we'll do is I'll let that set overnight and this will dissolve inside of there. Now, if you want, again, to try to get more zinc inside of this, you can take some of this flashing and just cut random pieces. It's relatively thin. And, you, and this will help start getting some of this zinc into your plating electrolyte solution. So we'll let this set overnight and then we'll come back to it. So this is what the bucket looks like after everything's together. And as you can see, there was some zinc onto this copper wire onto the sacrificial and you can actually see it bubbling and that zinc that was coated onto that wire is actually going into the solution. We allowed the zinc to dissolve in the solution for a week and uh, we're going to open this bucket up and show you the results. As you can see, the, the side pieces of the zinc um, have, the, the zinc has basically corroded into the solution. And uh, so we have a very zinc rich, rich solution now. So we will, you know, remove the, uh, the zinc sacrificial. We will remove these and replace them with new plates, fresh plates and uh, the solution will be ready to uh, start electroplating zinc. As you can see, it's, it's, the results are substantial, so there is a whole bunch of zinc within this solution, so it will plate very well. Now that we have a zinc-rich plating tank, um, and we've replaced the, uh, the, the zinc strips within the bucket, uh, the, the proper terminology is it's called a charged tank, meaning that it's charged with zinc particles. Um, we're going to start prepping our parts for plating. Uh, what we have here is a series of um, water pump bolts that we're going to um, plate. Usually what I like to do is soak them into lacquer thinner or some sort of solvent after they're prepped up. And the prep bolts, you can wire brush them, you can bead blast them, or, or do whatever to, to get them in a, in a nice state for plating. Uh, bead blasting will give you a coarser fix, uh, texture, uh, but the wire brush seems to work the best. Um, so what I've done is I've bought a bunch of uh, 12 gauge um, electrical uh, ground wire that you can buy at your box stores for like pennies a foot or whatever and it makes a great hanger for your bolts and we also have a, a brass bar with holes into it that we'll put into the top of our tank and that's what we'll actually hang the parts from so it's quite simple what we will do is we'll just take this bend this around the bolt you know, and then you can put the bolts into it. Uh, what I like to do is, you know, you, you fixture it where it, you're not, it's not going to be visible after you install the bolt. So down towards the end would be pretty good. And you just put it in your tank and hang it. Uh, we will do that for these four. And then what we will do is we will hook them up electrically.
And you want to make sure that your bolts are not touching each other. And you also want to make sure that your, your bolts or whatever you're plating uh, does not come in contact with the zinc strips. Uh, or else that will just short these L electrically. And um, the results will... Um, you'll probably blow out your power supply or your whatever you're supplying power to uh, to to the um, to the plating tank so I've got three of these fourth one so these are all now Whoops, that one dropped out of the fixture, so we'll go fishing and pop it back in. And again, the chemicals in here are, 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 are just vinegar, water, and, um, and caro syrup, so, so it's very... It's very benign, the toxic, toxicity is very low. Um, and when you plate, what it is, it's line of sight. So where you see these, um, these electrodes that have that are zinc, these zinc plates, it will go to this. Uh, what we'll do now is set up the power supply. What we have is a DC power supply with uh, variable voltage. And what I like to run this at is about 0.4 amps of current. Seems to work really well for a, a two gallon bucket. And what we'll do is we'll hook up the red to the zinc electrodes. Oops. We'll hook the red up to the zinc electrodes and then we'll hook the black up to your parts. Uh, DC current kind of flows from positive to negative. So what you want is you want the zinc ions to flow negatively towards your part. Uh, if you go the opposite way then you'll start taking steel from your your bolt and depositing it onto the zinc. So that's definitely not a a good scene um, so we're all set here and what we will do is we will turn the um, the power supply on and uh, we'll start plating oh one other thing you're going to want to make sure that your bolts are submerged into the solution or it will not work okay so the parts are in the tank now and what you'll do is if you look real close you'll be able to see bubbles forming from around the parts and what that's actually doing is that's depositing that the the zinc onto the bolts and if you have an adjustable power supply what you want to do is you know turn up the amperage until you start seeing that action happen and, and keep it there and if it starts bubbling too much then what you will do is you will just back up on that a little bit and what you'll do is you'll you'll do this until you see a real nice um, gray film over the uh, over the fasteners or whatever you're you're plating and then we will stop and we'll go to the next step Now that the parts that we're plating have a uniform gray finish, we will shut the power supply off. And what we will do is we will pull the bolt out. And what you can see is it's a pretty uniform gray finish on the, on the, the fasteners. And um, what we will do is we'll just take our... You can actually even see on the, the copper that you've got some zinc on to... On the, the, the wire that we're actually suspending the, the components in and what we'll do is we'll take a brass brush soft bristled brass brush 
and we'll just brush it and this is called combing and what you're actually doing is just taking that top residual layer off of the bolt and um, and now what you can see that we're actually the plate the, the bolt is actually looking a little shiny there's actually plating onto the bolt um, so next what we will do is we'll clean everything up that's being plated we'll, we'll put the hangers back onto the bolts what we might want to do is move the hangers a little bit so where it was not getting plated before it will now get plated this time and we will repeat this All right, so what we have done is we've plated these parts for three cycles. 15 minutes in the bath until it looked like a uniform gray color. Took them out, combed them, and repeated that two other times for a total of three. That gives pretty adequate film build. So what we're going to do now is shut our power supply off, remove the clips, alligator clips off of the parts, Take the parts off from their wires and give them a final comb. And here is the gray finish that you're looking for from the plating bath. And we'll comb them up one final time. And what I like to do is you can leave them like this so you can polish them with some of the... Um, polishes such as Simichrome or or mass or anything like that but I like to let them sit up overnight before you polish them really get with with those materials um, the plating seems to be soft at this state and I don't know if it's because of the um, the Caro syrup it, it is, is still soft you know that's what we use as a brightener on this material on this plating material or if it's just that the, the zinc onto the parts are soft too but even without any polishing they're really pretty bright and um, and they're definitely usable parts at, at this stage um, just a couple of other things that here are some of the miscellaneous polishes that are out there that you can use you know there's mass you know simichrome's my favorite I use this quite a bit and um, as far as if you want to wire brush your components or whatever I like these little teeny um, bench grinders you can put I put a fiber buffing wheel on this side and a um, and just a wire brush on this side and this works really well. It's it's lower powered than a, than a large grinder or whatever. So if you happen to slip or whatever, it, you're not going to throw your part halfway across the uh, the garage or whatever. And these are relatively inexpensive. And what's nice about them is they don't take up a lot of room. So that's pretty much it for electroplating using zinc onto hardware um, the next stage of this video will talk about gray phosphate and black phosphate plating of of fasteners but really nice results you know with real simple non-toxic materials and uh, what's nice about this, as I stated before, is you have control of, of your, your parts. So you don't have to worry about them getting lost or, you know, misplaced or things like that. So it's really easy to do and it's, it's real simple results.